What is up guys and girls, my name is Gary Blackwood. Welcome back to the vlog. This is episode two of the LA Diaries. I'm inside the Hustler Casino today and I'll be playing 5, 5, 10. If anyone shows up, the game is supposed to start at 12 p.m. It's 11.55, where is everyone? Maybe they're, they're scared of the Euro this entire, who knows? In all seriousness, really looking forward to the game today. Let's get straight into it. Whilst you guys marvel at my super artsy intro, I'll let you know that the game did not in fact start at 12pm, but at 1pm. So I was super early, but no harm done. There's a 5-5 game running that I'm going to jump into for an hour. Onto our first hand of the day, I have bought the button after a quick pee break. It folds right into the button and he makes it $15 to go. I've got King do suited and make the call. Off to our first flop of the day, it is King Jack 10 with two diamonds. I check, the button bets $25. I of course go ahead and call. To the turn, it is an offsuit 10. Not a great board for my King Deuce here, but when my opponent bets $50 again, I am going to call again. If he's drawing, he might just shut down on the river. We might be ahead, and if we're not ahead, we do have outs. Speaking of outs, how about a little King Ball on the river to start the day? I think we have a very clear lead here for an exploitative point of view. I do just that. I bet $100, and I get a size snap call by my opponent. I turn over my hand, and he turns over Jack-10. Boat over boat for a few hundred bucks to start the day. We will take it. That was the only real hand of note I had before the 5-5-10 game started. We're starting the game short, pretty reggae looking game, but that's okay. I'm always happy to battle with the boys and it's not long before we get involved in our first pots. MP has made it $35 to go. The button is called. I'm in the small blind with ace king offsuit. Very easy squeeze spot here. I make $140 to go. MP gets out the way. The button decides to make the call and we go heads up to jack six five rainbow. There's about $330 in there and I decide to bet one third pot it's gonna get the job done here my opponent folds quickly and I'm really happy that I didn't have to go into blast off mode so early in the day all right next up we've got ace jack of diamonds in the hijack and open to our standard $30 it folds right into the big blind and he's gonna re-raise me here to $150 it's a pretty big re-raise and I don't think these live pros find the suited connectors as much as they should in this spot but still ace jack suited I ain't folding just yet Heads up to the flop, it is 8-5-3 with two diamonds. A pretty good start for us here, flopping the nut flush draw. Big blind checks and betting here is of course completely fine, but I know this player is going to have some check raises in his range, so I decide to just check this one back, keep the pot small and see a free turn. The turn is the six of spades, two flush draws on board now, and my opponent bets out for a really small size, he only bets $75. I'm really not sure what to make of this size, but I don't think we need to get too fancy here, just going to play A, B, C and call. To the river, any diamonds about dealer? Nope, it's the ten of spades and after my opponent places a hefty wager, I quickly muck my hand. A pretty ABC start to the day so far here and I spend the next 90 minutes playing tiny pots before our next hand of notes. I put on the $20 straddle and pick up this very defendable ace nine offsuit. The button makes it $60 to go. I make the call and we're heads up to the flop. It is ace seven six with two hearts. Check, bet 60, call standard stuff on the flop. Offsuit six on the turn, check, bet 175, call once again standard stuff. Offsuit 5 on the river, I check for a third time and my opponent barrels for a third time, he bets $350. On the one hand we do block 9-8 but on the other hand my opponent's size doesn't really scream bluff so I deliberate for a little while before deciding to be disciplined and lay my hand down. I asked my opponent if he had it to which of course he says he did. Has anyone ever said no in that spot? Up next, the straddle is still on, and in this hand, I am in the middle blind and look down at pocket queens. Early position has made it $60 to go. The button likes his hand. He's going to make it $180 to go, and I have a very clear cold four bet spot. I make it $440 to go. Remember, this is 5 5 10 with a $1,500 cap, and the straddle is on, so we're not that deep here, so there's no need to go absolutely huge. But speaking of absolutely huge, the original pre flop raiser decides he wants to play for it all. He moves all all in. The button lets it go and I'm of course not cold for betting and then folding pocket queens. So I make the call. We're playing this $3,500 pot. Not sure what we're up against. And when I announce queens, my opponent tells me that I'm going to win both here, flashing his ace-king before he mucks. A super nice run out on the second one there. 
After that hand, we're up about $1,600 for the day. Feeling good, the table is tough, but the straddle is on. Chat is flowing, it's the way live poker should be. Next up, I'm in the straddle with pocket nines. This used to be my favorite pocket pair until I lost a flip against them in the Millionaire Maker last summer with 81 players to go. Anyway, under the gun is open to $60. The big blind calls and I call as well. Three ways to the flop, no nine for us, but we do have an inside straight draw. It checks round, no nine for us on the turn, but even better, we hit that inside straight draw. With two flush draws on board, I ain't wasting any time. I bet $135. Both players make the call and I don't want to see any more red cards dealer. How about that? It is the brick of all bricks. It is an offsuit three. I bet $375, praying someone will call me with two pair. Under the gun tells me that we might have the same hand. He for sure has two pair now. Eventually he decides he's gonna make the call. The big blind snap falls and under the gun turns over. King nine of hearts, not really sure what to make of that. Good thing he didn't shove on the turn though as he had a huge free roll and that would have been a bit of a sweaty one to fade. Next up is a very weird hand and it's the type of stupid spot that I managed to get myself into very regularly when I play live poker. So the cutoff is open to $30, no straddle in this hand. The button who's been playing pretty tight and he's got a short stack makes the call. The middle blind calls and I've got king jack offsuit in the big blind, I make it $135 to go. I don't expect any resistance from the button or the middle blind after they've called preflop. So this just has to get through the cutoff for me to win. The cutoff does not fold, instead he makes the call and my reads are clearly not on point today as the button then moves all in for $280 total. This is a really weird spot but given there's a bunch of dead money in there and we're getting a great price to get it in heads up versus the button, I decide to re-isolate here. I 5 bet to $575. Just trying to get it heads up with the button and flip versus his pocket nines or his ace queen or something like that. But somehow, some way, the cutoff then jams for $1,500 total. I really wasn't expecting that. The button is of course all in and and to be honest, I'm not even going to try and work out whether or not I have a call or not here. It's $900 more to me. There's already a couple of thousand dollars in there. So I sigh, I close my eyes, I make the call and I beg my opponents to run it twice. Both players say yes and I proudly turn over my hand. They both turn over theirs and they both have ace king. I managed to find a way to ping a jack on the first board and somehow book a small profit in this hand overall. A really sick hand and honestly despite me putting in $1500 preflop with king jack offsuit, I don't really know how else I could have played it. Maybe a way that involves not putting in $1500 with king jack offsuit I guess. All right, so next up is a fun one. I am in the bathroom and I miss the dealer change. I rush back to the table to try and get dealt into the double board PLO bomb pot, but I just miss it. It's $25 per person to play, but the guy to my right says that I can buy his hand for $100. Being the sick puppy that I am, I happily oblige. I buy his hand for 100 bucks and peel out ace king eight six with king high clubs. To the flops and we've got a little something something on both boards here. The flop manages to check round and on the turns, the small blind bets out for $150. Another player calls, I make the call too with my top pair of my gutter and my nut flush draw and then LA poker legend Israeli Ron is going to pot it here on the button for $900. It folds all the way back around to me and I think this might be a bit of a punt but he's only got a couple of hundred behind so I decide to just go with it. Let's just fuck it and gamble to the river. The first one doesn't help us and the second one I make two pair on. Ron's going to turn over 993 deuce. He's got zilch on the top board and the nuts on the second board. So we end up chopping this one. I should be really happy to get my money back here but one time dealer just stick a club out there on the bottom. Back to the boring old game of No Limit Hold'em now, these double board pillow bomb pots ruin me for any other poker variant. Another less famous local pro has opened an early position to $35. Small blind calls, I'm in the middle blind with ace 10 offsuit and call as well. The big blind also calls and we go four ways to the flop, it is king, five, deuce, all spades. We've got the nut flush draw and not a whole lot else. AP bets here for $45 into four players. He looks pretty strong but I have the nut blocker so I make it $150 to go. 
It's a small-ish raise, but paired boards and monotone flops are two types of boards that we want to play small raises on, so I really like my size here. Quick side note, if you guys want to get better at playing monotone boards, I recently released a podcast for Upswing Poker. I'll put a link in the description below and you guys can check it out. Anyway, back to the hand, EP is going to call my check raise here and the board pairs on the turn. I wasn't sure what to make of the board pair, he definitely raises deuces under the gun so he can have some boats here for sure, but I decide to keep on betting. We can put a lot of pressure on his top pairs, his ace queen with a spade type hands, so I bet $320. My plan here is to bet again and just shut down on the river if I don't improve. Fortunately for me though, it's going to get the job done, my opponent's going to let his hand go and we take it down. Poker has gotten hella complicated over the last few years, but sometimes it can be nice and simple. I block the nut flush, you can't have the nut flush, I'm going to blast money into you until you fold. Very, very easy. I'm up about 2k at this point, been grinding for about 4 or 5 hours, and we've got a couple of hours left in us before we're done, picking up these lovely pocket queens again in the small blind. Our buddy Ron is open to $40 in the cutoff, and I put my ladies to work, making it $175 to go. He's going to make the call, and there's a queen in the window, followed by two fives behind it. I have only gone and flopped a full house. I think we definitely want to see bet here, even though we've got the board locked up. There's lots of middling pairs, plus hands like ace jack with a backdoor flush all that will call us. So I make a small bet here, I bet $100. He makes a call and offsuit six rolls off on the turn, and my plan was to bet, check the turn, and then bet the river. So I check, and my opponent actually bets himself on the turn here. He bets $265. A little surprised by that, given how unlikely it is that he has a queen. Maybe he's got a five for a sick cooler. I just call, I want to keep his range as wide as possible. An ace rolls off on the river, and I check again. He snap checks back and tells me that my ace wins. I have course have a little better than that when I show my hand he actually shows me the case queen super unfortunate we weren't able to stack him there but I wonder if he would have gone all in if a brick had rolled off on the river we will never know I spent the next couple of hours grinding out lots of little pots, nothing really vlog worthy of note, so in the end I decided to rack up my chips and head to the cashier booking my second win in as many days so far this trip. And that, guys and girls, is the end of our second episode. I won about $2,500 today. The game was not amazing, and it broke after about five hours, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, people are straddling, double straddling, PLO, bomb pots, all that great stuff. Uh, but yeah, really good start to the trip. After two sessions, I'm up about $5,100. Really happy with that. Let's hope we can keep the momentum going tomorrow. Take it easy, guys. See you next time.